well, we're not, not right now. We're not. Huh? We're not building. We're right not now. build right now. The city's build eight dollars. How many? Eight twenty. Eight twenty. Is that what it is? Eight dollars. I think it's eight even. Eight even. Eight, eight, eight even for the disposal of the trash and six twenty for our pickup fee that was bid in two thousand twelve. Yeah. Eight dollars. Sorry. And and but but where we're coming from. We will have to cover the dumpster costs. We'll have to get with each one of our dumpster customers and come up with a rate to charge them for that. You know, I mean, it's kind of a mess. The county's left us in. They say that we're the only county left that way. Thanks a lot. <laughs> you know, um, I I wish we could have all discussed some of this prior to it going out for bid. It might have cleared a little. We might have. I don't know. I don't know what the right answer would have been. You know, hindsight's 2020. You know, our bid proposal was very our what we received from the city was very vague as to what 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 we were supposed to put together. We put together what we thought was the right number and the right answer and the right answers to the questions. And uh, so that's where we came up with what we got. We believe it's the right number. You compare it to Manhattan. Uh, Center. Clay Center. Clay Center has their own land. Yeah. They're at $15. I think. Yeah, it's all on there. It's yeah. all on there. Um, I believe it needs to be in the vicinity of where we're at to make it work. We have our trash gets taken 90 miles further than Manhattan's does, 30 miles further than Concordia's, and those numbers just kind of make sense in the freight from what other communities are. You know, so that's where I'm at. Um, but you're still getting paid, right, Eric, from the county for hauling. Yeah, that's that's yeah. a separate contract. That's separate. Right. Yeah. We've had that. Two period. We've had that contract so since. This is that's totally not, different. That's no, a that's different. right. Yeah. We've had that contract since yeah. 1992. So this is just for trade. Yeah. Right. The point, the point is, the cost to the resident is still reflect, you know, reflected in how far we got to ship it. So. Sure. Sure. That's how we're That's getting 18 is compared yeah, to Yeah, we've had that contract since 1992 when we <coughs> first did it. So, okay. anyway, any questions I try to answer? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, anything else, Mr. Um, can we get a response from Mr. Hodger? Yes. I'm very comfortable with my bid. I've been doing my homework for the last six months. We've been in the business since 1958. With all due respect, I think we know a little bit more about it than a lot of people. Uh, the landfill fees that the county is charging the residents now, $8 per account. They've already told me that it's over what it should be, but they have a lot of overhead. They pay Don Jones and Gary Spore their salaries out of it, their insurance, the insurance on the buildings. They pay for the equipment. They just bought a new tractor. They had a new bulldozer. They pay for the uh, fairground recycling center. They also pay $24 a ton to send out recyclables from the recycling center. They pay the water bill up there. Everything comes out of landfill fees. There's no tax money in there. So that's how they can justify. When I first started looking into it, I tried telling them, I says, how are you guys losing money? I don't understand. At $8, the residents are already overpaying. And then they enlighten me that everything out there is paid to landfill fees. They're not just paying their fees to Rolling Meadows. They're paying the construction permits for the construction pits. They're paying everything. Everything's coming out of there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I can. I can at least you give me my perspective or whatever kind of what I put together is I put together a little bit of analysis as best I could and kind of like you guys are saying it's a little bit of a uh, there, there's some data out there but it's, it's you can make a lot of numbers work I think and so um, I think part of it and Dustin's kind of identified it in their first sentence you know is that there's no accurate way at this point to determine the exact tonnage that the city's producing I think that question was asked here um, so it is a little bit of a guess of what makes sense. And so that's kind of where I came up with my numbers. We got some information from Carm, who's out of Mitchell County, the, the dump, to, to kind of give us her estimates. You know, the city's producing us where we got that 130 ton number per month. Um, you know, in July, based on her best guess, it was about 90-ish per ton per month. 
then what I did was I took, um, for my community, I came from in Iowa, you know, fairly similar type community, we have about 900 accounts, um, got their numbers, their hauler does weigh all the trash, so he knows how much garbage, how much recycling, that's on your table there, how much recycling, and obviously he also does grass clippings, and again, that's separate, they keep that separate. So I just added the recycling and the garbage together, kind of came up with a per unit tonnage that we were producing, and we have about 2.71 people per household, you have about 2.17, so, we have actually a few more people, it's a little bit more dense. Um, so I tried to come up again, trying to find numbers that were working, you know, that, that were, does it make sense? And I think Fairfax, where I came from again, had about 93 tons on average that we were averaging, if we were, a, you know, the size of what we had 1,450 units, that's kind of what I extrapolated it out, okay? So um, you're about, you know, uh, uh, not quite double our size, but, um, so that's again where I try to find some numbers. So kind of that combination of the two, again, just to try to do a little bit of a bid tab, a bid analysis, almost like we would on a street project. And that's why I probably really strongly suggest going forward that we have a little bit more of a, a tonnage report just for our community. I think it makes it easier for these situations when we are trying to bid it out so that we're not having to play these guessing games and, and, and it's easier for people to bid on that every four or five years. So that would be my, my input and that's where I got my data from kind of a combination of everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other questions? So to be clear, we have to make a decision tonight in order for us to have trash picked up January 1st, correct? Well, again, according to Mr. Heiser wrote, last month, if it was to be him, he would need three month lead time to, to get his vehicles and staff in order. Um, <coughs> no decision is a decision. Correct, yeah, I'd say no decision at this point would probably be status quo, potentially. Potentially. I, I see, you know, a couple alternatives. You know, maybe I put that in the package, you know, where, where we could require, you know, we could come up with some hybrid type scenario where we get some accurate data over a certain period of time. So again, we could get accurate quotes going forward. I think, I think that unfortunately, you know, we're, everybody's just kind of throwing numbers out there. We're not quite sure what we're measuring. Me, based on the information that we received, the numbers that we've got from the bids, and where all how all this has taken place, I would make a motion that we would accept the bid from Hydro with Trash Service. And I would second. The motion has been made by Councilman Miller that we accept the bid from Hydro Trash Service, second by Councilman Graybon. Is there any further discussion? No further discussion. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Tom, we had, Katie had a follow up yes. on that. Yeah, um, we've received two letters from the county, and in my opinion, they don't maybe necessarily have the language that I would feel comfortable with that formally terminates that agreement that we have with the county. It's a 2012 agreement. I think you've, you've seen it previously. Um, so I and we either party can terminate that agreement by November the 1st. So I would suggest a formal action tonight that the city formally terminate our agreement with the county for trash services. That way I can feel comfortable that we're covered, that the agreement is for sure terminated. You know, they obviously that's their intent, um, but the letters just, they don't, spec they don't um, specify that agreement by date. So I would just like to send our own termination so that we are covered on our end. So if you could, have a formal, based on what you just did, we need to have a formal action and then I will prepare a letter um, signed by the mayor, send it over to the county. For November 4th. We'll, yeah, we'll get it done here in the next couple weeks. Yep. Motion to formally terminate our contract for trash pickup with the county, effective, well, uh, would be effective January 1st, 2016? Yep, December 31. Okay, December 31st, 2016. Second. Okay. Motion is to terminate our trash, uh, our refuge pickup with the county effective December 31st. Motion by Councilman Grave on and the second is by uh, Councilman Ponto. Any further discussion? Just a second. Question? Oh, yeah. Um, because you decided to take Hyzerate's bid, we. Well, motion to. Um, 
to vote, right? Is that what you've done? Yeah, we we we, um, we have accepted. accepted. We'd like it. we'd like to the council to discuss the option of we have about 200 recycle customers. They would. Well, we would like the option for those customers to be able to opt out of the trash service because they are producing less trash. Um, or at least explore the options that we can maybe go with there. Okay. Well, that's something we can discuss with staff. Yeah. So I just wanted to throw it on the table for you guys to start thinking about the request at the bottom of your letter. So yeah, yeah. Is yeah. so that motion on the board is to uh, terminate our trash pickup with the county effective uh, December 31st? Mm -hmm. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda this evening is the tree trimming from Paul's Tree Care in the amount of $35,000. Any questions for staff? And I do actually. Um, how? So basically if a city resident noticed there was a tree growing up into a power line or other, they would contact the city and the city would then take care of it based on this? Or how does this work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the past, the tree trimmer has always went through town and they're only picking up off the primers. They're not uh, taking any limbs off the yard, up in the yard themselves. So that's between the property owner and Paul or somebody else. Um, so they're basically, Ron, they're going to go, they're going to have a map of our primaries, and that's what they're going to kind of well, focus I'm on. I'm planning on trying to do what we did uh, back in 2012. We're going to start them out on one end of the town and let them go through and clear out our primary. And then the other thing that I included from the, from the other time, I want to clean out the street lights. So uh, there's a lot of street lights out there that if you're not aware of there, even the lift, you're not going to see them. So we might as well get some good out of them while we're doing it. So when you say primary, you, like the main line that runs down to Hersey, um, that would be, you're not, you're not, you're talking. Well, the main, the main feeders, uh, a house service mm -hmm. is a secondary. Right, the one that comes off the pole to the house. <coughs> to the house. That is the homeowner's responsibility. Right. But the main line that goes down the street, which feeds those, that is what would be handled. By him. Uh, or, or down the alley. Yeah, yeah. Or down the alley, where the primary is at, because they run on the street and down the alley both. Uh, although, uh, I would like to have the right to be able to walk in a yard and trim something off the secondary. If, if that's what i got to do to keep the wire up in a storm, or something. Uh, I mean, if we leave it there, it's probably going to cause some more trouble. So, I mean, whatever we do, I, I'm going to kind of keep that right to do that. Okay, so it's, uh, the citizens shouldn't have to notify you. That's something they should be noticing as they move through the city base. Right. Okay. That answers my question. Yeah. Do you have any? Oh, sorry, Tony. Yeah. Uh, I guess I, I know we did this. You say 2012, but. Why isn't this regular maintenance work by the city crew? I mean, uh, I'm, you're busy. I understand this, that this should be regular scheduled maintenance work. Uh, and it should be. Uh, we've been in uh, extensions for a lot of years for our new stuff, and we haven't really been back on the maintenance for a long time. And we can let it go. Back in 2012, while we went ahead and did that, we had a lot of outages because of the tree limbs. And there's other things that call outages, but uh, Sunflower, anytime they have an outage, it costs them a lot of money. You know, $30,000 here is probably a drop in the bucket for them, but it costs them a lot of money for one of those outages. And it's an inconvenience to other people. Uh, your tree limb could cause a little spike. Uh, it may burn up some electronics, some uh, appliance or something. <coughs> I mean, there's a lot of things that takes effect there that we're trying to prevent by having someone else do it. Uh, there's other things that have caused spikes. We can't do anything about the squirrels or the birds, but we follow up with what we can do. Do you have any idea how long it'll take? Uh, the last time uh, they, it's not a true time frame, but when they started here, it took about three years good but some of it was that they got started on our stuff then they brought it out and did a lot of residential stuff that wasn't part of our deal which uh, took a lot longer to get our stuff done and uh, I've already talked to him that I wasn't wanting it this time he starts on us I want it done 
I kind of concerns me in this quote. There's really no time frame when they have to have it done. Did they get it done in a pretty timely manner the last time? It did seem like I thought it took quite a while. Well, I remember it, it, it took right. way longer than I thought it should. Should that be in the contract then? That it's something that we could do. Uh, I've been thinking about doing that. Work in conjunction with Cunningham's. They're kind of, right. I guess, I don't know what they're. Now, the receivable, or I'm sorry, the, the pay, you know, when we paid it, it was over the course of just one year. So I don't know how, you know, how that jives, but the, uh, we started, the first payment was on December, end of December, so maybe they started even before that, and then the last payment was like January of, December of 12, and then January of 13, or of 14, or something like that. It was just a little over a year. But. Did they agree to remain on the job until complete and not put the job off or any other jobs like you put in that, or no? <laughs> well, he said he would, because he, okay. he didn't class me on. And the other thing that they're going to do is uh, instead of calling that chips out of a person's house, they're going to deliver it out of, at the whole yard, so anybody can have it that wants it. Uh, instead of calling way out in the country or something, I just dump it out here and let our customers have it. Ron, Ron, do they have any sort of metric on how much they do clear, how many hours they spend on our stuff, or anything like that? Again, just kind of not that I've ever seen. You know, hey, it took us. 100 and you know, 400 hours or whatever to do all that so then we can say was it you know our guys cost us about 30 bucks an hour with benefits everything you know to kind of to answer you know Tony's uh, question you know there's cost benefit but curious at some point it'd be nice to get back trimming on trays but we got to get through all this new stuff that we've been doing for a long time uh, once we get through with that new stuff we've got to go into our whole replacement there's over 1,500 poles in this town that are bad. You know, at yeah. some point, it's going to cause trouble. Is that something moving forward when we get all of our expansions done that the crews can start running a plan that they can work through the city and so we can eliminate this $35,000? Uh, eventually, I'd like to. Go ahead. The only other question I have is if there's anybody else that would have bid on this. Uh, what I understand, he's the only one that's uh, certified in power line clearance. tree trim for false tree trim the amount of $35,000 was second by Councilman Ponto. Is there any further discussion? <coughs> further discussion, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed saying? Next time you have an estimate of what you follow with causes a police car, the amount of $28,000. Uh, Chief Elam, would you like to come up and address the council? Sure. Or, or if anybody has any questions, comments. Um, this car would be replaced in a 2006 Crown Vic. It has over 100,000 miles on it. Um, the vehicle specs meet out of a, a stripped down police package version of a car, the bricks, all that stuff that is uh, actually a performance package. Uh, vehicle list for $36,000. You know, my concern about this whole thing is, you know, I understand what you're doing. I think you know, it's a great what you're trying to do. But well, my sure. concern is, I, I just don't feel that we did this, and that we, we kind of just kind of, hey, this is what we got, this is what we want, and this is. Uh, I, I did get a letter from that earlier. Yeah. yeah. Um, that should be included in the package. Uh, sure. The light motor still doesn't hit on our vehicles. Sure, but there's other Chrysler dealerships around. In the, in the in the area that I think you know personally I just think when we're spending the taxpayers money it's good to get bids and so you know so we're comparing it like are we really do are we really getting a good price on this or you know I love taking people's word for it sure no what I would, I what I would point out is we, we, the county did go through the bid process and 
Well, they track it on. It was the only one that submitted bids. Yeah. Well, did we did did we? Bid I, I did not go out. And, and well, that's outside, outside the city of Lloyd. I didn't go sure. for another bid. I did not. Well, the big thing for me is you know all the other departments we bid it unless there's an emergency and nothing and nobody else makes that repair or what we're trying to do. We bid it and you know and this you know we really didn't bid it and and I think you know for our to be fair to the people of our community we need to be bidding stuff like this and I understand where you're coming from it's available and you got a great idea but you know the only thing I'm really opposed to is the fact that it wasn't bid and that's okay. that's my two cents worth you know no, no, that, that, that's, that, that's fine but what I would what I would point out was the vehicle bids that we did receive and, and I did not go outside the community and, and I, I'm guilty of that I didn't do that um, the, the price of this vehicle is is roughly the same that if I did a base police package and had a bill this one's on the lot it's already ready to go and, and that that's what I would submit yeah. however if, if you want to go to a bid process we can we can work that too yeah how long would it take you to would it, would it be ready by the next council meeting if you did more bids or would it take longer than that no I, I, I'm not sure how all that works because we we've, we've never done it um, so I mean, it would be something I would have to get with the city administrator on and figure out how that process so it might take two weeks it might take a month for just I, I would say less than two weeks I don't think the county put theirs out for very long I'm not sure yeah. well the, the other question I have for you this is you know just from the fact that I've been on the council for a while now but you know it seems like a lot of the cars that we bought you said this had a heavy uh, brake system on it That's correct, performance sir. package and things like that but in the past when we've got some chargers the one that was uh wasn't a police package we had all kinds of trouble with the brakes and and we kind of had to rotate it out a little sooner yes. and then due to uh financial constraints at one time i think we bought some uh <coughs> leased chargers that didn't have the police packages and so i you know and, and it seems like in the past our history has been that we haven't had a good luck with the cars that don't have the so-called police package. I'm assuming the, they have. the first charger that you're talking about, it was a police package. Yeah. And for whatever reason, it, we couldn't we couldn't keep a brake or a front end under the thing. I'm not sure why. Yeah. Uh, the other, the last two you're talking about, the 2010 chargers uh, that we purchased, and we held on to those for almost three years. Right. Uh, now we did have some uh, repair costs associated with those, uh, but those were a lot smaller cars than we're talking about today. So is the suspension on this equal to a police type of <coughs> Yes, sir. I, um, the, the, the actual specs of this car is meets or exceeds the expectations of a stripped down police package car. Well, those are the questions. You know, like I said, I, I think it's a, a great program. What we're trying to do, but I just, I feel well, like I'm not on the I don't have a problem with that. What I would submit is that realistically moving forward, we did buy a car this year. Um, we're not planning on replacing the car next year because if we get this car, then our, our vehicle rotation, we're looking at figuring out some some way to rotate cars. Uh, our, our, our fleet is relatively new since since we've started. Um, and, and right now, our, our highest mileage vehicle is a 2011 Tahoe <coughs> 29 unit. It doesn't get used like the primary patrol vehicle. And then after that, you're talking about 40,000 miles as our next highest mileage vehicle. Is Dodge through Chrysler the only vehicle manufacturer that offers a police package vehicle? No, they're not. Ford has one, and that's that was bid on the show. Well, just because Tom was talking about going out to the Chrysler dealer site. No, no, Ford, I mean, they, they, they bid a Ford. I could have got a Tahoe, uh, you know, through through that, that particular process as well. However, that's a pretty expensive package. That's, that's kind of it, it's up to them, though, if they want to bid. They right. Have, they have to right. see it before they can. That's correct. Is there a, a ratio of trucks to cars that you would like to have? I've, I've noticed. Yeah. Right now, we're about half and half and with the Explorers and the Chargers. Uh, and then we have another Tahoe. Um, it, it's a good mix to have those for inclement weather or, or when you have the high water that we had as recently as last year, the Chargers didn't do very well. Uh, but the Explorers and the Tahoe did. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you, Matt. I and mean, that's kind of what Chief and I were talking about as far as rotation. You know, is figuring out hey, what's the mechanics of cars, and really be nice to kind of stay with the same 
type of four on cards to jump around. Let's try a Taurus next. I mean, there might be a few dollars difference. You kind of learn the car, I feel. It seems like some of the farmers I see, they can't kind of find their car that works for them, and, and that's what they get. But that's just a thought that we haven't put together yet. <laughs> but Any other comments? Were, were, you, were you having trouble with the Crown Vic, or did you just... The Crown it? Vic is uh, over 100,000 miles in the ass. We were, we were having some maintenance issues yeah. with the Crown Vic. Maybe air conditioner. Because there's, you know, there's a lot of vehicles out there with more than 100,000 right. miles on but them. they don't get used like ours do. So it would only be natural then with, with the way that Crown Vic was being grown within the city. If you get 100,000 miles on it, and you're going to start having problems. It depends on the vehicle. The KHP trades your vehicle in at 50,000 miles. I mean, it doesn't matter what vehicle they have. Andrew, I'd like to make a motion to table until we receive additional bids. Okay. The motion on the floor is to. Uh, Table the purchase of a patrol car until we have additional bids. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Ponto. Any further discussion? No further discussion. Those in favor of tabling the uh, motion to lay out uh, four bids uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries to table it. Then by more bids, you want like outside of the county? Yeah. Let me yeah. just like understand. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like Concord or Salino or Concordia, Concordia, Hayes, Clay Center, <coughs> some that's not that far away. <laughs> Sam, we may end up back where we were, but I yeah, like exactly. To see. Right. I understand, and, and uh, uh, you know, I want David to know that we don't want to oppose what he's trying to do. We're just trying to. I think we need to be bidding when we're making these purchases, uh, since we don't. I'm not going to police have a police car to finance at this time. We'll skip over that. And uh, the next item on the agenda is the tournament. Oh, I, just I that. did have one other question on that police yeah. car thing, though. Um, were you in Yes, sir. On the payment of it, was that intended to be paid out of 2018 budget? That would be the first payment, yes, sir. So we would be spending money we don't even have authority to spend. Right now, is that true? Sure. No, you'd be fine. We just yeah. set that budget when the 2018 budget. You know, when we go to we do that instead. Sure. You would definitely have to put in your own debt payments. Well, you could say about any debt payment or any bond payment got a 30 year payment history. So I understand what you're saying, but yeah. Okay. Thank you. I see it more. Sorry, look. I see it more as a. We've already set our 2017 budget, and now we're trying to buy a car. So 18 makes sense because then we can make adjustments for it. And I think some of the cars will be falling off at that point. But it, it's about. Okay. Motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Then moved by Councilman Ponson that we adjourn. I have a second. A second by Councilman Miller. Any further discussion? No further discussion. Those in favor of adjourning, please sign by saying aye. 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 Opposed, saying we are adjourned. We will go into the work session. Katie, do you have anything? No, I no. don't. Okay. Jason, do you have some? I do. You'd like to yep. Figure this I figure now I can get a little bit wordy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, not, not a lot here. I just kind of pass these. Okay. Take one pass now. I'll try to keep it brief. I just kind of want to give you guys a little bit of update on the. Uh, um, company is sorry, Chad. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, all the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> water report. I did meet with the individual that's doing the, the testing. He's getting that set up. The biggest issue there, roadblock they're having, is there's a lot of permitting issues. That's why it's taking a little bit of while to get the results back. So it's actually a portable unit, and so there's only so many of these pilot testing systems. It's like a water treatment that's on a water, water treatment facility on a trailer. Almost, you could say. The next issue they're having is phasing of power, trying to get the power there where they want to collect it. So that was an issue that's been tagged on here the last week or two. So his goal is to have it online and going, and then again have some data by the, by the end of the year. So I thought that was a positive. Him and, and uh, uh, Jim were uh, working on the THM. I think that was a, a knock we kept getting. They have figured out a way to you know, so we're not in violation of that anymore, which I think would be a positive from a PR perspective and also a safety safety perspective, most importantly. Uh, the biggest issue is that uh, the KDHE, I believe, is 
fairly slow in approving that method because they want a lot of validation. And it's really all about when they're entering the chlorine and how they're doing, how long they're doing. I won't go into a lot of detail, but it's actually really interesting. That chlorine and, and organics mix and produces THM, so if they can hit it later on and for a short period of time if they can, it produces less THM. THM bad stuff. So just more in case people are asking about it or, or want to talk about it, I do plan on uh, giving it a few more weeks before I, I bug the person pretty heavily to say hey, we need to get this done. But yes, um, I have noticed that it continues to be on the front page of the Blake Paul yep. asking for water surveys back. Where do we stand as far as how many we've received, how many we need to, how much longer do we need to continue to you know, drag up this process of all these surveys being asked for? Heather, can you address that? Yeah, we still need more. <laughs> okay. We do still need more. Um, and I, we can take it off the call. I don't know why it's still running. But yeah. I mean,